Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is another in my practice session series for the EX467 Red Hat exam for Red Hat Certified Specialist in Managing Automation with Ansible Automation Platform. Before I dive in, I want to thank returning subscribers for watching another video as well as invite anyone who's watching if you haven't subscribed yet to click the subscribe button and ring the bell. Also a reminder that these are my practice sessions for the exam, uh, my exams in just under two weeks and I'm going through all of the objectives and either demonstrating what the objective is talking about or explaining whatever concept the, the objective is, um, is after. And I do this to do a self-assessment and hopefully I feel confident with the objective. If I don't, then I still have a couple of weeks to, um, to brush up on some knowledge gaps and such. That being said, these are not intended to be tutorials, nor should they be used as training materials. I do try to have the information accurate and I share these to give folks that are also preparing for this exam some ideas on things to practice, but they should not be considered authoritative information or, or tutorials or the like. So continuing with the install Ansible automation platform set of objectives, we're going to be looking at configure automation controller after installation. So of course that's wide open. I mean, you know, where, where, where does the scope end for configuring automation controller? That's basically what, what the exam is about is configuring that and automation hub and other things. So for this video, I'm just going to focus on, um, I think what, what I consider a couple of key things that you would need to, to do uh, like immediately after the install script has finished. So I'm going to log in to my uh, control node. I will use the admin password that was set up with the install script. And the first thing that you are greeted with uh, right after the installation is needing to uh, basically register your subscription for um, the, for Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform. I would imagine on the actual exam, this is already going to be done unless they provide a manifest file that they want you to upload. But you know, in the real world, which is what you know the exam is preparing you for, this is what, what you would have to do. Now, I do not have a manifest file. I am using this as a part of the Red Hat developer subscription. And from what I have gathered it, um, basically grant, you can get a 30 day trial subscription of Red Hat and Small Automation Platform, which is really nice if you want to you know, work with this in your own lab and you know have access to the thing that it is that you are preparing for. So I'm not going to re request the subscription, rather I'm going to use my Red Hat developer subscription credentials. So you will put in whatever your user is, whatever the password is and get subscription. So I'm going to pause for a moment while I put in my credentials for this and get the subscription. And when you put in your credentials, you'll need to select whatever uh, subscription it is. In this case, this happens to be my Red Hat developer subscription. And you have the option to um, turn on user analytics and automation analytics. I'm not gonna do, well, do I want to do this or not? There, there are some features that I think are outside of the scope of the exam that are, I'd have to double check the objectives to make sure that are a part of automation platform as far as you can use Red Hat Insights to generate playbooks to remediate things that Red Hat Insights finds are wrong with your system. Like if there's vulnerabilities that need to be touched or if there's like, you know, known good configurations to do, I think you can have stuff I'm not 100% sure on this, but you can probably have stuff that's aligned with like DOD STIGs and the like, and um, the Red Hat Insight service could potentially say, hey, this system is not meeting this particular STIG standard, and you can have a playbook generated to be able to fix that. Again, I'm not sure if STIG is something that's available, but that's just kind of an example of the kind of things you could probably do. So I guess for this, I'll keep it on. And you have to agree to the end user license agreement. And once that is successful, you'll be redirected back to the um, dashboard for the automation controller. And so, of course, I don't have anything um, actually configured yet. If you're curious to see what you get for your system, I think we can go into settings, if I remember correctly, and subscription settings. It shows this is compliant, and I have 16 things that I can manage with Ansible Automation Platform. Also, I guess I have it for the duration of the of my uh, Red Hat developer su subscription. That's kind of cool. I, I, I thought it gave me a 30 day thing, but looks like that is, that's the deal. So that's kind of nifty. Anyway, um, 
you know, easily distracted by stuff that I don't look at that often. So as far as things you must do once you have finished the setup script, that's really about it. I'll go ahead and log into my um, private automation hub, but that I don't believe is going to have anything that prompts you at the very beginning to do as far as initial configuration. Yeah, it's just here. You can see the execution environments that were pushed up as a far as part of the installation script. I guess, let's see, let me take a look at the objectives real quick, because I don't want to double up on stuff. Um, upload content environments, private automation hub. I guess if it were me, now of course on the exam, I will, I'll do only exactly what the exam wants me to do because time is precious. But I guess for me, what one of the first things that I would do when I'm done is set up some repositories because the whole point of really having the private automation hub is you have, you know, something on your land that is kind of a mirror of what Red Hat is providing and that you can put, put your own content into. I think you can publish content to the actual Red Hat automation hub. I'm not hundred percent sure on that. Um, just general knowledge is probably something I need to, to look up and make sure that I know. But one thing I will um, say with the, with like the actual Red Hat certified collections and such is when you are putting in your, your credential for this, I have found that username and password, at least for my Red Hat developer subscription, have not worked for this. Um, instead, I have to, to generate a token from the actual Red Hat automation hub. And I guess I can show you how to, to do that, to be able to make use in the, um, you know, in, in, in the real world, even though I have a feeling you're probably not going to have to do this on the exam just because, you know, the exam is kind of a self-contained little environment and you're not allowed internet access with the exam. And by default, if you're reaching out to Red Hat Automation Hub, you are reaching out to the internet. But of course, I could be wrong. So let me go to um, console.redhat.com. So within the Red Hat Hybrid Console, you can go to Ansible Automation Platform. Let's see how well I, I remember this from when I've done it in the past. We'll go to Automation Hub. I believe Connect to Automation Hub is what we want. Gives you the URL. I think the offline token is is what we're going to, to need with this. So you click Offline Token and it should show you a token that you can use. So what I'm going to do is copy this to the clipboard and I'm just going to, for demonstration purposes, obviously when I'm done with this video, I'll, um, I will make sure that this token is no longer valid because you know, the entire world gets to see the token. Typically these tokens are not what you show to the outside world. But what I can do here is I go to edit and then token for the Red Hat certified. And then you click sync. And for me, this initial sync is going to, to take a while. So I'll probably pause the, the video and then show what this looks like after it's done. One thing, if you're kind of curious to see if it's actually, you know, working and doing something, you can SSH into your private automation hub. And what I'll do is basically watch the journal. And eventually you're going to see entries for, um, for pulp. Actually, I think, yep, there's, there's one there. And so while, while it is get, um, syncing all of the Red Hat certified collections and such to your private automation hub, you're going to be seeing um, logs for, for pulp. So if it feels like you're just watching, it says running and it, you, you don't feel like you're, you're actually seeing anything going on, you can look there. Also, I think, go to task management. We don't want to stop the task but you can see some of the stuff that it is that it is doing as far as other configuration things. And again, this might bleed into some of the stuff about private automation hub. But again, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm thinking real world, you know, this is what, what I would do after my very first, you know, I've just now installed automa Ansible automation platform. I would also sync any community repos from, um, from galaxy. And here, what you would need to do is upload a YAML file that will have um, basically uh, just like if you're using Ansible Galaxy collection install and you give it a, uh, a requirements file, requirements.yml, 
which I guess we can go ahead and do this as well. So let me create a little requirements.yml file. So this should be familiar to you. We get community.general. I'm not getting Ansible POSIX because I think that will be one of the actual like Red Hat certified collections that, you know, if you're paying the money to use automation platform, you might as well use the collections that have come from Red Hat. Um, community General is probably going to be everything that I, I need for that. Oh, did not mean to do help.txt or hit F1 for that matter. All right, that looks good. And so to set up community, and click configure or edit, give it the URL, which this is just going to Ansible Galaxy. This is the requirements file that I made for it. You don't need to authenticate to Ansible Galaxy for this. Save, and then we can sync this as well. I'm going to let the Red Hat certified collections finish and then sync. Otherwise, I'll, I will trash my internet connection. It is better than the DSL that you at least for the area that I'm in that you would typically have is T-Mobile home internet. And it usually works pretty well, but especially in the evening time, you know, I can pound that pretty hard and I'm not necessarily wanting to do that right now. Let's see what else would I potentially want to do. You could, and this, I, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head exactly. See the challenge here. All right, so what uh, you obviously can't hear what I'm thinking in my head. Another thing that I would want to do is for the official execution environments from Red Hat, I would like to have like up to date ones. And so I would think to add an execution environment. Um, we, well, first, first thing you would have to do is configure your re remote registry, which we may be able to do. You know, I think I mentioned in the first video about needing some type of token, but that might not be the case. So this is something that I myself am going to need to research because I feel like I need to, to kind of have this memorized, even though I probably don't, but just knowing me. But what I would want to do is set up a remote registry that's pulling the execution environments from, I, I assume, registry.redhat.io. Um, and so that way you have kind of the always up-to-date execution environments in addition to any other execution environments that you would want to put into your environment. So again, for stuff to do immediately after doing the config, the only thing you have to do is do the registration of your control node, but I would think it would be appropriate to um, sync some of the Red Hat content, and then you would want to create the remote registry. See, see now I'm curious. So while we're waiting on that still to sync, I guess I could indulge this. We can use Podman to do some searching. Um, let me log in, registry.redhat.io. All right, and let's do a search. We'll search for um, EE supported rel8. And I've logged into registry.redhat.io, so I should have, okay. So I guess we can go ahead and do this. So the, I'm using automation platform 2.2. So we can see if we can set this up, see if it works. So remote registries. One other thing that would probably be good to do, well, I, you know, actually I don't think you can do this. Um, generally you can configure stuff in automation controller via APIs, which you can either do that by actually doing curl commands or there's, um, I think it's ansible.controller collection. I don't think there's a lot you can do with Automation Hub with that. I may be wrong, but I think it's a good idea as you're learning this. And I, I've tried to do this with my own training for the exam, even though I'm I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to to use the the GUI for stuff. That's kind of the you know the bread and butter of Red Hat's Ansible Automation Platform product. But I think it's good to be familiar in doing various tasks, both in the GUI as well as using. API and such, but I don't think the um, the private automation hub has a whole lot of API stuff available to you. Of course, I could be wrong. So what we're going to do, I'm actually just going to name the registry the same, or at least name it in here the same as it is with Red Hat. So, so Ansible Automation Platform 2.2, then this will be the URL. All right, so save the registry. 
see how this other sync is doing. That's one other thing. Notice this little first index, last index. I need to troubleshoot that sometime. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do, actually, just again, knowing the internet connection that I have, I'm going to let this sync finish first, then do a sync for the community collections, and then lastly, do a sync of this container registry and see what, what appears with the execution environments. So we see that the Red Hat certified um, repo has completed its sync. So if we were to go into collections, actually, if we go into namespaces, you will see far more namespaces. I probably should have looked at this before. And if I were to go to Red Hat certified for collections, we see lots of collections that come from the uh, Red Hat certified repo. So we'll go back to our oh, one other thing I wanted to mention. So we now see Red Hat Certified has, um, I think this is content collections, like third or it's either items or content collections. I, I don't have high resolution on this VM, but you know, 3,600 things are now in sync, and that's from the the remote. We uploaded our requirements file earlier, so now we'll sync the community repo. Now the community repo has completed, and so if we were to go into namespaces, we should have a namespace called community. And, well, I would think, oh, filter by repository, Red Hat certified, there we go. Filter by repository community, and we see, you know, updated a few minutes ago, the collections for the Ansible dot or not Ansible dot, the community collections. So we have General and Kubernetes. I wonder if that is, I was, I was kind of surprised to, to see Kubernetes there, but anyway, what I specified was uh, community general. Perhaps uh, Kubernetes was a part of the, the Red Hat thing, which I'm kind of surprised if that, that were the truth. And so lastly, for our execution environments, we're going to try to sync that remote registry and see what happens. Hmm, that finished far faster than I expected. So let's see, yeah, I didn't expect to see any new execution environments from that. So indexing the execution environments. Obviously, this is not something I've played with much. So that has kicked off several tasks. Looks like they're all done. Ah, so that got okay. So that gathered all of the execution environments. Okay. Hmm. That I wasn't quite expecting. So I wonder if edit this here Show advanced options hmm I wonder if there's a way just to specify I want well, I guess that's see because this has platform two zero and two two and two three so really all I would want would be two two so that'll be something that I just on my own want to experiment with and we still have the original ones that came on this, okay, so it basically grabbed uh, grabbed a ton of stuff out of that. Hmm. That's interesting. I might might just on my own blow this away and, and do it again just to see what happens if I if I try different settings or if I don't do the index all of the execution environments. You know, do choose the option to add an execution environment. I would pick this um, this registry and you know give it the upstream name and on and on and on for that so i might blow this away and and and, and try that and if i do I'll, I'll mention in the video but as far as the actual objective which is configure automation controller after installation the automation controller bit we have we have done the only thing that you have to do is the um, setting up of your subscription for Ansible automation platform. The other stuff I did, I don't think is really in scope for the exam, but it's, in my opinion, good stuff to practice because the whole point of the exam is kind of setting you up for working with Ansible automation platform in the real world. So if you found this video useful, make sure you do uh, click like. Feel free to uh, comment on the video if you wish as well. I want to thank returning subscribers for watching another video and invite you to subscribe if you haven't yet and click the bell when you do so you can be aware of when new content comes available. Thank you for your time and I'll see you the next time.